Project Ascension by The Myth and Darth Lake 22. Chapter 4. Rainbow, please help me. Rainbow Dash's eyes shot open at lightning speed as he heard the words in her head. She could have sworn that they were Skidloos and could only dread to think of what that poor Billy was going through now. She felt her body being bound together by something. Not by magic, but rather by rope. She looked around the room and saw no pony around, thinking they were likely still asleep in their beds. She was fortunate enough to know how to break free from ropes such as this, and this was not the first time that she was tied up. After a few minutes of struggling, she was free from the rope and got off the bed silently, looked out the window, and saw the sun slowly creep up for the horizon and heard the wizard's call, signaling the start of a new day. Rainbow just wanted to fly to her house first, get her saddlebag with food and survival gear, then fly off to find Scootaloo. But she heard the door open and saw her orange earth pony friend entering with a blank expression. More Sugar Cube, how you feeling? She asked Rainbow, knowing all too well what her friend's answer was going to be. Rainbow merely snorted at this. Let's see. Scootaloo got abducted by some creeps. We don't know where to look for her. I've been forced to sleep down tied by a rope. I feel absolutely fucking great! She answered sarcastically to Applejack, who just frowned at this. Applejack just shook her head and walked over to her friend to hold her. Rainbow, you gotta listen to me. It wasn't your fault. It was, Applejack. No, Rainbow. It wasn't your fault. Rainbow sniffed slightly and pushed her away. D -d Don't do this to me! She stammered to Applejack, who smiled weakly. What in your fault? Don't fucking do this to me, Applejack. Not you of all ponies! She warned her friend, hot tears cascading from her eyes. Rainbow Dias, it wasn't your fault! Rainbow was soon swept from her rage as he felt her friend pull her in once more. Her stubborn courage broke soon enough as he simply returned to hug, pressing herself into her dependable friend's shoulder, sobbing uncontrollably and apologizing. Not to Applejack, but rather to the filly she failed in the end. Applejack just stood there as a pillar of support for her broken friend. In reality, she was scared of those two ponies and what they were going to do to Scootaloo. Though she knew one thing, she needed to be there for Rainbow Dash. The one strong pony now reduced to a wounded mare. Come on, Sugar. Try us waiting downstairs with the others. We're going to find Scootaloo today. It should be safe and sound with you by bedtime. I'm sure of it. Skulu dimly noted when Blue and Black returned. The cage was open, and the cuffs around her legs were undone. The chain connected to the collar was unhooked from the cage, and Black tucked on it. Come on, Blue ordered. It's testing time. When the filly didn't move right away, Black yanked the chain harder. Skulu was pulled out of the cage, gagging and hoofing at her throat. Go, Blue ordered coldly. Skulu's legs obeyed, though her mind was screaming to try a run but she neither had the strength nor will to do so. Black led her, occasionally tugging at her leash in an attempt to get her to hurry up. She was led into another room with what appeared to be a staircase that led to no particular location and a few large cubes. Budwing was there, smiling. Hello, my dear. It's about time we began. First, we are going to test your wings. She was led to the foot of the stairs, where her collar was removed. Climb up there. Scootaloo peered up the long flight, afraid to move. After a pause, Bloodwing nodded to Black. Grinning sadistically, the Earth Pony picked up a switch lying nearby table and marched over to Scootaloo. With a mighty swing, he brought it down on the child's flank with an audible whip. Ah! Scootaloo shouted, crying again, but her tears were not heeded. Sobbing, Scootaloo obeyed, slowly climbing up the flight of stairs. When she reached the top, she nervously peered over the edge, and was surprised to see some safety cushions resting at the bottom. Recite the rules of flying I taught you before you left. Bloodwing reordered. She remembered. She gave them both a glare as he stood at the top, her wings ruffling slightly as she closed her eyes slowly, remembering the two facts on flying. Flap at the rhythm. Tilt to airflow. Bloodwing nodded as he hummed. Good. Now do so for me, my pretty. 
Scootaloo looked down on him with absolute disgust, but reluctantly agreed. She jumped off the platform with her wings flapping, but she fell to the ground with a yelp escaping her mouth. As she landed on the cushions, she felt more pain on her back as she was given another strike by Black. The pain stung and she was pulled back to her hose. He said, fly, not fall. Now get up there again. Scootaloo's lips quivered as her eyes were locked on the platform as he made up to her again. This time, she jumped off the platform, but her wings kept in position, gliding slowly downwards to the ground. Once she felt her hose reach the floor, she felt a slight moment of joy at her first successful glide, but that feeling was soon replaced by depression, as her first glide was preferred by the sick pony's motives. Black marched toward her, switched at the ready. He said fly, and you just glide, you little enough! Black turned his head sharply, and saw Bloodwing glare at him with murderous eyes, making Black freeze in position, fearing for his life. He, she has made progress now, and thus, she deserves a reward. He said as he watched past the confused Earth Pony, holding another syringe. Scootaloo tried to back away, but she was soon pierced by the metal object, and felt the liquid entering her body. Instead of agony, she felt pain being soothed, and her body began to relax with each passing second. A painkiller. You must have been through so much. He cooed to Scootaloo, as he reached his hoof to her chin to raise her head. Don't you worry none. For once this project is done, you will be a pure goddess. Scootaloo became petrified by his eyes, oddly red like his fur. The eyes looked at her with a mixture of pleasure and murderous intent. She slowly closed her eyes and wished for Rainbow to come and save her. Bloodwing sighed as he left her side, ruffling his feathers slightly. No, back up the ladder, my dear, and we will try again. Black, if you will. Yes, sir. Black answered his master as he grabbed a filly and pulled Skolo towards him. You hear that? We are going to have so much fun. He sneered at her, as Skolo growled at the earth pointing in front of her. Twilight's library had never been so crowded this early in the morning, but every bearer of an element of harmony was present, as well as Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle, wanting to know where their friend had gone. Each had saddlebags packed with essentials, and in Rarity's case, some not so essentials. It's the middle of summer. I doubt you're going to need a casimir sharp, Twilight complained. There's no telling what those two brutes. I'll take it to poor dear, and I want to be prepared. Twilight rolled her eyes. Fine, but if that load slows you down, you better be ready to toss them on the side of the road. Are you crazy? These are top of the line. There's a filling li life at stake. You can afford to lose it. Well, I suppose. Oh, good morning, Rainbow Dash. Hearing this, Twilight immediately summoned a shield around herself. Well, this was good, because seconds later, a hoof bounced off of it. You put me asleep! Rainbow Dash yelled angrily. We lost a full night! A night we wouldn't have been able to do anything on anyway. It was raining and dark. My spell can only work. We still could have done something! Anything! Most of the ponies backed away immediately, but Twilight held her ground. Rainbow, please. I know you're anxious to get Scootaloo back. I'd feel the same if it were Spike being caught. But you need to think about this logically. If we had gone out last night, we would have been out in the rain and the cold. My spell would have barely been effective, meaning we would have been running around accomplishing nothing. And on the off chance that we caught up with Black and Blue, we wouldn't have been in any shape to take them on. We knew nothing about this bloodwing. Until now. The sign Pegasus actually calmed down. What do you mean? Twilight Lawyer Shield, I recite a reply from the princess. My most faithful student. I do, in fact, recognize the name. Bloodwing used to work as an instructor in my school for gifted unicorns. You might have seen him a few times during your early days as my student. He was a brilliant pony, but he was quite unethical in his practices. When Spike hatched, he asked for a chance to examine him more intrusively, which I refused. Then one day, while you were in class, I caught him trying to take a few scales off him. I fired him, but I never told you the incident because I feared it would worry you. That was the last I heard of him. I've never known Bloodwing to be particularly dangerous, but before Spike, he also asked permission in other experiments. 
He wanted to try and make life. I rejected on moral principles alone, but he is no longer distressed by that, so it's possible he succeeded. I will not try to stop you if you chase after him, so please keep a tracer spell on yourself at all times. I also sent my permissions to the Royal Guard to give you free reign in your quest. Good luck, my most faithful student, Princess Celestia. As Twilight looked up from the scrolls she was reading, she saw Das's face bearing the deepest fury she had ever seen her friend muster. Das snatched the scroll from Twilight, reading herself before slamming it hard on the floor, stomping her hoof down with enough power to crack the wood. If that mother pucker does anything to Skulu, he's going to wish he was in Tartarus! She yelled as he stared down the tarnished letter. The ponies in the room were startled to see Rainbow become so angry in an instant. But Twilight could sympathize with her on that matter. Had it been Spike instead of Skulu, she too would have done anything to get him back and destroyed those who harmed her son. Rainbow, he is not going to get away with this, I assure you. She told her friend, who calmed down slightly as her frown slowly disappearing from her face. Rarity decided to intervene. Darling, we will get Skulu back, and those ruffians will see justice for harming the poor Finny. She assured Rainbow Dash, who let out a sigh to calm herself further. Rear these rats, Sugar Cube, so you mustn't jump the wagon and do something foolish like what you tried the last night. We gotta do this together, and we're not gonna let those farmers get away with hurting Skulu. Applejack spoke as she joined Twilight and Rarity sighed. Please don't be mad at yourself, Rainbow. I'm sure that we f find Skulu and return her home. Everything will be back to normal. Fireside whispered softly to her friend, though her mind was in a tangle of fear what those ponies did to Scootaloo. Pinky popped up in front of Rainbow, causing her to jump backwards. That's right! When Scootaloo is back, we're going to throw her the biggest party ever! When we're sorry, Scootaloo! No, wait! Wait a while, Scootaloo! Or, no, 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 how about... As Pinky Pie continued babbling on with potential party name ideas, Rainbow could not help but let loose a small mile on her muzzle. She was fortunate to have friends like these in her life. Friends who knew she would always have her back. She also knew that she needed to stop wallowing in guilt at what happened, and she was now determined to find Scootaloo, bring her home, and set things right. Rainbow lunged herself to her five friends as she held them all in a group hug. The five ponies' shocked expressions turned into one of care as they held onto Rainbow Dash. You girls are the best, Rainbow said. They were simple words. But those words were all that were needed to express her gratitude. Rainbow and the others let go of each other. Twilight faced her friends. Now, before we go, girls, we need to do an inventory check on our equipment before we go. Once every pony is ready, we make for the exit and beyond. You got it, Twilight. Yep. <laughs> yes. Okie dokie, lucky. Of course, darling. Twilight and the others turned their heads to Rainbow. And you, Dash? Twilight asked her innocently. A look of pure determination crawled onto Rainbow Dash's face as he looked up. 120%, Twilight! We're going to make them pay and get Scoots back! He held her hoof high, with the others tapped together. Twilight walked back to her saddle and pulled out a checklist, levitating each item as she had in her saddle bag. As she was checking on them, in the corner of her eye, she saw Spike packing his own bag. Her eyebrows arched in confusion as she lowered her quill and moved toward her son. Spike! Zia called out to him as he turned to her. What are you doing? Spike looked at her with a smile. Packing my bags! I'm going to come with you, Mom! He answered her, though she was a big sock to hear this. Absolutely not! She snapped at him. He recoiled slightly with a look of fear in his eyes. She regretted yelling at him and held him in her embrace. Spike, you're my son. I don't know what's going to happen once we find Skulu. I don't even know if we're going to be alright. I need you to stay here at the library until this is all over. Here, where you're safe. Understand? She told Spike, who looked at the ground sadly. Yes, Mom. He answered Twilight, and proceeded to lay a gentle kiss on his forehead as she held on to him. I love you, Spike. Spike could not help but hug his mother in return as she nuzzled him affectionately. I love you too, Mom. Ooh, what's this? Rarity said, levitating up a piece of parchment sitting on top of Spike's bag. Looking at the rice, he read aloud, The brave knight tossed toward the fish's metacore, his sword raised high. Spike snatched the paper away. It's it's just a little something I'm working on. <laughs> he was fussing. Twilight smiled. 
You should really let others read what you've written, Spike. They're very good. Spike just wrung his tail awkwardly. What about us? Sweet protested. Skuggles our friend. Rarity shot the Phillies a look of pure anger. No! I'm not letting that brute get another phone, especially my sister. Last right, Applejack nine. Y'all two best stay here. But the foals protested, but their older sister's glare silenced him. Twilight nodded. Good. Now then, I got a carriage to carry away our things in. Applejack, you need to lead us back to the area where Blue and Black were last seen. Spike watched as the older mares walked out the door before turning to his packing. What are y'all doing? Applebloom asked. Fizzing packing. But Twilight just said you shouldn't come. Spike gave a sly smile. My mom worries too much sometimes. <laughs> she does do stupid things when she does. So, whenever she worries, I just do the best thing. I don't listen. The foals looked at each other. They looked back at the dragon with their own grins. Oh, that's a good idea. Scootaloo was beginning to wonder if she died and went straight into the realm of agony and torture. For what seemed to be an eternity, she was learning how to fly. Every time she failed to perform blood wing standards, she was lit by black, then injected with pain relievers by the mad scientist. When Bloodwing decided that she had learned enough, her collar was replaced and she was led into another room. Here, she was forced to buck several objects, starting with wooden floors that spin in half and ending with metal that dented to their liking. Her legs felt like breaking with each buck she was forced to do, and even though she was able to leave a few dents, her legs were swollen and showed signs of bruises. Still, she never slowed. Every hesitation met another lash. By now, Red gashes were forming on her flank and back, and since it didn't require her to maneuver as much as it did when flying, the color wasn't removed. It seems that project is, is a far ahead of schedule. The flight has improved by 70% at best, though of course, since it is her first day and having such marvelous wings, there will be some bumps along the way. Yes. Blenwing muttered to himself, as he was holding the notepad with his wings, who walked toward the next room with Black and Scootaloo behind him. Also, your strength seems to have increased as the formula has induced a muscle growth to her legs, though not on par with her of ponies. Further testing is required. Yes. Scootaloo was glaring at him with even more hatred, so her glaring ceased when they entered the next room and saw a podium which had a single glass of water. She was wondering what this was for, but she felt her throat becoming parts from not having anything to eat or drink in the time she was there. Bloodwing walked over to the glass. No, my precious. Move this little glass towards you. He instructed her, the order confusing her. With your magic, silly. And if you get it right, you can have a drink of water. Scuttle was dumbfounded, as he had never been able to perform magic. Though, now she had a horn, which was forced upon her by these ponies, she looked at Bloodwing with a frightened gaze. I... I don't know how to use the magic, she pleaded, though she was wet again by Black. No, no, Black. She just needs to learn that all, that's all. He told him plainly as Black chuckled at the pony's pain. No, my pretty, with magic, all you need to do is imagine you reaching out for the glass and dragging it towards you. Magic is just an extension of your limbs, but also the ability to form great feats, yes. <laughs> he laughed with his mouth closed as he closed his eyes. No, come along, dear. You haven't got all day now. As he looked toward the glass before her, she remembered how Twilight would concentrate in a book and move it toward her. Concentration. That's the one thing she needed most right now. So she looked to the glass intently. To her surprise, it glowed an orange aurora, which made her happy for the moment. Though as soon as he smiled, the glass ricocheted across the room and smashed into tiny pieces. Black started moving with her with her switch, but Bloodwing stopped him. The mad scientist produced another glass of water. Much to every point's surprise, he brought it to Scootaloo's lips and let her drink. There, there. You did manage to lift it after all, he said with surprising amount of gentleness. Was it real or fake? She didn't know anymore. The water hurt her throat raw, but 
and she called it down greedily. It was plain tap water, but it tasted so heavenly. Once the glass was empty, Floodwing poured another and set it on the podium. She wanted to beg for more, but the fear of the switch kept her silent. No, then. Levitate again. Sighing, Skulu focused with all her might. Her horn flickered a bit, sending out sparks. The cup started to shake, wobbling where it stood. Skulu was becoming rather tired from the excessive use of magic, which she only used for the first time today. When the sparks ceased, she started to sweat profoundly, and breathing became slightly difficult for her. She could not explain it, but the feeling of using magic drained her stamina faster than running or flying could ever do. She closed her eyes slightly to relax and try again, but shot them open when she heard the stomping of hooves toward her. When she looked up, she felt a searing pain coming from her chest as Black decided to buck her right there. She flew across the room and collided with the wall with a thud, collapsing to the ground, counting out blood splatters. This filly's starting to piss me off! Black growled at the help of Scootaloo, though Bloodwing's calm exterior turned to one of panic. No! You idiot! What did you do that for? Black tore toward Bloodwing, smiling smugly, teaching his full lesson. What else? Skulu felt a sudden force of rage flowing throughout her entire body as she shot open her eyes and stood up from the ground, glaring daggers at the star alert pony. Bloodwing became frightened by her stance and turned toward Blue. Blue, kick, restore, uh, before she... Before he could finish the words, there was a loud bang as the room was filled with a orange light. All three of the ponies were sent flying toward the other side of the room were they immediately unconscious as their bodies slammed against certain objects. Skulu was burnt with rage quite literally. Calling a time where Twilight burst into flames out of pure rage and frustration. The moment she calmed down, she blinked her eyes and looked across the room. Confused and overriding her senses as she tried to understand what had just happened. She saw three ponies and carefully walked toward them, fearing they may jump her at any moment. She saw a key attached to Black and proceeded to rip it off his neck with great force and used it to remove her collar around her neck. When she got it off, she held it in her hoof and started to tear up slightly. She looked down at the fallen black and clenched her teeth in disgust at this pony. She threw the collar against his head with all her might. Skulu saw the door and immediately ran, where she entered another room with a window. She used her wings to gain momentum and jumped out the window, though before she reached it, she was covered in a coat of magic energy. Smashing it and gaining a few extra cuts from the shards, she tumbled on the ground and immediately got up to view her surroundings. She could not see Ponyville anywhere, but she did see Canterlot in the distance. Immediately, Scooter would gallop toward the city, hoping against all odds that Princess Celestia would help her out. Maybe even Rainbow Dance would be there, looking for her.